Set of Yankee Jim, he is the most popular person here in the cemetery. Before Thomas Lloyd bought the property and built that house, the county owned that lot. That's where the gallows stood. They hung three people. Yankee Jim was the last one, he was 6'4". So he fell, landed on his tippy toes, and it took him about 45 minutes to choke to death. After that, the county decided not. He's taking a picture, he might as well take a picture of us. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, no, I'm doing video right now. Oh, okay. Uh, so after that, the, the property sat vacant for about uh, four years. No one wanted because that's where the gallows stood. 1856, Thomas Whaley made the county an offer, bought it, and started to build the house. There were 10 acres altogether. Anyone would like to give a guess on how much you think Thomas Whaley bought each acre for in 1856? $25. $25. Any other guesses? $10. Getting closer. Any other guesses other than it was one dollar and fifty cents? Oh my! <laughs> At this point, if you'd like to walk around the cemetery, take a look, take pictures, please do. I'll meet you in a couple minutes in the back. Unfortunately, they the la the only bench that was here they took out because the lady kept sleeping on it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, but there's a there's there's um. Some metal this memorial plaque you can lean up against. Oh, this goes back pretty far. structures have all been rebuilt. The two original ones are the two metal ones. These two have been here from the mid 1850s. Your legs cramping up? No, I'm stretching out my back. Okay.
Nice place up on the hill. <laughs> yeah. Check out, what a view. Check out over there that TV. The what? TV. Oh, yeah. You guys want to gather up, we'll start talking again. This is El Campo Santo Cemetery, the third official cemetery in San Diego. First one's by Seaport Village. It's called Dead Man's Point. 1769, when they came ashore, they had dead and dying. They buried them there. Everyone by Seaport Village has been moved. Second cemetery is up where the mission is on the hill. Cemetery there is called the King's Garden. There are still plenty of people buried in King's Garden. Anyone like to give a guess on how many people you think were buried in this cemetery? It's okay to be wrong if you like to make a guess. 500. 500? Yeah. Any other guess? 25. How many? 25. 25. More than that. Somewhere in between those numbers. <laughs> oh, that place? 40. Oh, sorry. No, this I cemetery right here. Oh, this one has 25. How many? 50. 477 people were buried in this cemetery. But if you count the markers, there's not that many. The wall that we walked by was across the street and about 10 feet into the building. We decided to put the road in, they brought the wall up, and the asphalted and cemented over the people in front and the people in back. Oh my. 1993, the city had sonar equipment come. They ping the front area to find out where they are. So as we walk out, we can look into the street and sidewalk for the markers at, say, gravesite. When they pinged out there, they pinged in here. Everyone's marked like this piece of PVC pipe in the ground with the washer and a screw in it. Each of the discs have a number stamped in it, so they do know where everyone's buried. And after ghost hunting now for over 24 years, I've actually found nothing in this cemetery. As we walk out, we'll pass over about 10 markers. When we get out to the street and sidewalk, I'll point out some of the markers there. And we're gonna head back down How the street. How come they kept some people with the stuff and some people just got this little thing? 
Those so, are the ones from the ones they moved, or? So they rebuilt the cemetery to the way that it looked like in a photo from 1888. Oh, uh, okay. So Why? this is what it looked like. Why? So a lot of the, cro the little markers that were in the ground when these people were soon after buried, those markers are all gone. But uh, they wanted you to know where everybody was. That's why they marked them with those. Uh, okay. Sorry? Um, why did some of them have the fence around their graves? Oh, yeah. That's how some of the Catholics marked their graves. This uh, was a poor little town. Uh, so people, people did not have money for like big stones or markers. But sometimes but they, they spent the money for the, the wood structures to, to mark their loved one. Uh, like unlike, you know, this one here. This must have been a real, they didn't have enough money for the wood structure. The average value of a person was about $50. The building we're gonna go inside of, the Cosmo, Mr. Bandini, he was worth about $250,000. That's why he had such a big house. Any questions of anything else before we leave this spot? Can you head out this way? Two steps. I didn't even notice that. Yep. Yeah. There's one of the markers there in the sidewalk if you haven't seen any of the markers. Another marker here in the sidewalk. This out in the street, you see that little circle out there. There's one of the markers out there on the street, you see that little circle at the end of the fence in the road. Wow. This is the last marker there in the curb. Last markers there.